Day here, how are you? Today is the 21st of March 2021. I'm hoping I got this, the uh, date right. I'm pretty sure I did. And it looks like everything's running well. Um, look at all these people that are coming in. Thank you so much for watching. It's, uh, it's a real buzz. It gives my ego a bit of a kick. Okay, today on the show, uh, we are going to be having a look at Peter Lisiak's outfeed assembly table, which is height adjustable, he tells me, uh, before we get to him nicking off. He's got to go halfway through. He's already been given a pass out by one of the other, by the other guys in the forum there. Excellent. AV is great. All the sound is great as well. That's terrific. So today also on the show, we're going to be continuing on with the Lutian bench. Now, I've been told it's pronounced Luchin. I don't know why, but you know, if you agree, that's great. If you if you like me, I like the sound of Lutian. It sounds a little bit sexier. Um, morning, all. Good day, everyone. Blue shirt, you knew it. Yes. Uh, what else are we going to do? Uh, I had a viewer during the week uh, saying that he was having trouble setting up the Craig jig. He's got a K4, so I said, look, I'll go through that quickly on the show. Um, so he's going to watch. He was having trouble getting the right screws to go in. He said they were coming through or not grabbing. So you've just got to be confused. So I will, I will go through that. It's easy to, to get confused, especially if you're new to the game. Um, and as I said, Peter's outfit assembly table. Today on the show with the Lutian bench, what I'm going to do, Lutians with an S, is it, David? All right. So was it? Sir, whatever his first name was, Lutien, or Sir, whatever his name was, Lutiens. I don't know. I don't know. That'll be something for you guys to have a bit of a chat about. Now, during the week, what I did was I tidied up this template. Now, I've got the template already bonded to one of the pieces of New Guinea teak, which is forming the back of this beautiful bench. It's just magic. I'm, I'm so happy doing it. If you guys want to do it as well, I found it in, um, what magazine was it? Fine Woodworking. And it was edition August 2000, number 143. This is where it is. I think you can get it online if you've got a membership. Uh, Aluthia Sexy 2. I guess they are. I guess they are. So this one is designed by Tony O'Malley. And he's the guy who goes through it. And that's the design that I'm following. I've had people ask, whether I was doing this or whether I was doing um, one from Norm Abrams. This is, this is the one that I'm doing here from Tony O'Malley in that magazine. All good? Hello, my darling. How are you doing? Why aren't you at cricket? Because it's raining. We have had so much rain. The water outside that door is around about that far down from the, from the actual door itself. It is unbelievable. You put the link up in last week's show. Thanks, Peter. All right, all right, all right, all right. So I'm going to show you, quickly going down here, a little bit of video of sanding the curves on the template. So we'll go to that. So here I am using the belt sander. And it works so much easier if you've got a belt sander mounted on a bench. It doesn't have to be a big one like the one that I'm using there can be a little guy as well, a little one-third horse. It'll do the same job. So you can see I start to get a little bit caught in that corner there. Now I'm not doing the internal curves at this stage. I'm doing the externals with the with the belt. So I'm going to move the uh, I'm going to move the machine away a little bit. Give it a second running out of space. So dragging it around a little bit further. And then I can do some of the internal curve work with the nose of that belt sander. All right, so then we move on to using the spindle. And this is for getting right into those tricky internal curves. I do use the belt cleaning stick as well with it. I don't show you that I'm doing that. That's the sander that you need, Derek. It's a beautiful sander. And also the bobbin sander or spindle sander, it makes, makes it so easy to get stuck into it all. 
All right, now back to me. And what we're going to do is we're going to trim this piece of timber to the pattern. Now, on the pattern here, I don't know if you can see, but there's a fair bit of meat I've got to take off. You can see it just here above the pattern and in other areas. Now, I don't want to do that in one go because this is around 45 millimeters thick. If I, if I try and take that off all in one pass that deep, I'm going to be asking for trouble. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a little trim router with this particular cutter in it. Now this is a quarter inch shank and it's a box bit. It's a box joint bit. It's got two bearings on it and the cutter is actually very flush with the edge of the bearings. So I have a couple of flush trim bits and they've been sharpened. So be aware if you try and get these things sharpened, sometimes it reduces the meat on the, on the actual cutter, on the blade, and you'll get a step. And that's not what you want. So I'm going to use it in this little guy. And I think this is a 16 millimeter spanner on it. No battery in there. Okay. Very, very, very important, especially with trimmers. Take the battery out. You, or if you've got a trimmer with a lead on it, pull the lead out of it. All it takes is for someone to just bump that switch while you're doing something here and say goodbye to your fingers. All right, drop that in. And this has also got a spindle lock here. And before anyone asks, no, Ryobi don't sponsor me. I went down to the green box shed and I bought it. Okay, that's locked in. All right, I'm going to test it. Not going anywhere. I love it. This is a great little machine. All right, I'm going to adjust it down. And there's a little crank here. Which way are we going to go, David? That way. Taking it down until I've got about three millimeters of the bearing exposed. That's about it. And then I'm going to lock it. See that? I've got the bearing exposed at the bottom. I'll put my hand behind it so it's easier to see. That bearing is going to follow on the pattern. I'm going to have a quick look down here at the same time to make sure that the bearing isn't going to be touching there. And I've gone too deep. I back it up. It's got a micro adjust on it. Because what was happening there, the bearing was actually touching the timber, not the pattern. That's better. Come around the other side so I can look straight into it. Go down just a touch more. Setting these things up correctly is very important. You don't want it to start, you don't want to have to stop halfway around. I want to go right the way around and be done. Just too far. Done. It's one and a half millimeters per rotation, I think. 1.6, something like that. All right, now this doesn't have any dust extraction. So it's going to make a bit of mess, so I shall move my coffee out of the way. How are we doing for time? And passed and put the eye muffs on for this one. It's always a good idea to use protection when you're doing this kind of stuff. When you're going around the outside, you're going counterclockwise. Okay. It's going to be cutting this direction. If I was to go clockwise around, it's, that's called a climb cut and it's going to want to race at me. So if I'm pushing it away from myself around counterclockwise, it's all going to be good. Now, I don't need to anchor it down. I'm going to, it's sitting on the grip tape, so it should be fine. All right, 
you may want to turn the volume down a little bit. It's not a really loud machine, but you know, here we go. You like that? I'm not racing it. control and the other thing is don't rock it at all because it's going to want to bite you hold it dead flat and approach it from the part you've already done the start of the cut at don't approach it on the where there's still a lot of meat really sexy have a look at that you can see I've got that part done now that's as far as I'm gonna go using that the rest I'm gonna do down on the um, router table with a spiral up cutter with a double bearing on it as a carbide thing it's got a beautiful uh, spiral on it so it will slice it's not gonna be chopping because that one chops this one is going to slice. Now the reason I've done that is because now really what I've done is I've made my template this thick instead of just the thickness of the MDF on the top. So I've used the, the lightweight machine just to create that beautiful curve, the exact size, and in effect I've made my template that much better. Uh, have a quick read. All good here, I'll be very soggy. Okay, made it a bit late. Morning, Mike. Um, heck no, how many bad habits for tea is not one of them. Coffee drinker, though, through and through. And just thought before the highway was closed. Okay, good to Have they closed the highway, Peter? I wonder if they've closed the highway across the Nepean River. Surely it hasn't come up past the bridge. Good morning. You know the story if you're late into the corner. Up to the corner. All right, I'm going to switch the cameras and get my keyboard from... <laughs> this doesn't happen with Festool gear. Uh, I was going to buy the MF700, but it's around about four times the price of that little Ryobi. And I thought, you know what, I'll give it a shot. I've had good luck with the drill and that thing 
seems to go well. There's no hose or leads hanging off the back to make me tip. I guess I could have got the DeWalt. There's a Makita make them as well. But uh, I was in Bunnings and that thing just had a nice weight to it. Anyway, uh, closed at, okay, on Friday afternoon. Where's my mouse? There it is. We'll switch cameras. Uh, yeah, Monday, Richmond is shut. Good. All right. Camera three. Here we go. Now, I won't be watching what's happening on the uh, screen because I'll be down here with this guy. So, there's the cutter already in there. I will release this and raise her up and bring it over until I'm up past to about there. That's lovely. Unlock that height. Now, one of the other things about this cutter, I can switch it around just a little. One of the other things about this cutter is that it doesn't have a very tall depth of actual cut. That's one of the other reasons why I had to bring this, bring this down. Because you can see the cutter finishes maybe two millimeters below this actual part. So whilst I'm doing this, it's going to follow here. And also because it's a spiral up, which means it's pulling the shavings towards the router. Remember the router is upside down. So this basically looks like it's a down cut, but it's actually an up cut. It'll help pull the dust down into the cabinet. And hopefully the dust extraction down there is going to work. Now I haven't finished my dust, new dust extraction system. Uh, so I need to, and this one also will be getting some more work done on it, but I need to turn it on manually over here because I've disabled everything else with it. And I'll check that those gates are all shut. They are. All right. You can hear, hear it coming. Beautiful. Get the safety out. Remember that's why I could put my hands near there because I had this little yellow thing out. Eye muffs. All right. Now, this one I need to travel on the outside. So you know how I said earlier that you need to go counterclockwise. Well, the router is upside down. So now I'm going to go with the wood clockwise around the actual router. The main thing is that I'm cutting into it as I'm going, not that I'm cutting into it at that direction, although you can do that in special situations. All right, let's see how we go. I'm going to use push block, the holder. slowly there because there was a lot of meat just here to take out. Go around the corner.
Okay. There's a couple of little spots there on it. Let me come back to this camera. Okay, there's a couple of little spots on there that I haven't quite got. But it's not a big issue because I have this thing called sandpaper. And when it's assembled, like so, see how it's sitting on that flat. That's just, I have to push hard on it. This is 90 degrees up here perfectly. That's, it's going to be pretty damn fine. So all the way around the end, as it needs a bit of a sand, but all the way onto the insides. Yeah, there were comments that it is expensive. They are expensive. But I was at no time getting that kind of tight feeling in my undies. You know what I mean? <laughs> when you start to think, oh, I've got to be careful here. Um, sorry, I just deleted someone's post by mistake and I can't find who it was. So, so <laughs> yeah, sure, Ian. <laughs> You've been holding a grudge for weeks. Someone made a comment, I bet. And you thought, right, I'll fix them. Okay, now I need to take the template off. That's all good. So I'm going to use, by viewer's demand, a paint scraper instead of a chisel. All right, let's get in here. And again, I use blue tape. And um, super glue. That was how I held it on. Blue tape and super glue. And it works just great. A lot easier than double-sided tape. I was using Turner's tape all the time. And I had a few people say, Dave, use the blue tape. Everyone else on YouTube is doing it, so I do. And thank you. It works brilliantly. Done. All right. Now, that's with, the, that's with it off. Isn't that just lovely? It's beautiful form. All right, check my list. How are we doing for time? Why not? Let's have a quick look at Peter's outfeed table. He's got to nick off very soon. And we'll go to here and I'll use my pieces of mouse pad. All right, uh, hi Dave and the guys of the Stanton Hour. This is my outfeed assembly table, the top of which is adjustable and the first part I started with. The original design was for a saw stop table saw designed by the down to earth woodworker. Steve has his plans available for free on his site. Okay, I modified his design to suit by adding two extra drawers. Let's go through it. The, um, the first shots are of the top torsion box construction followed by one of the front legs and the face frame. So we'll go down through these photos. There's the top on the torsion box and the, one of the legs that Peter's made. And then we go to the frame, the face frame. And next thing we go, another picture of the face frame. And then we'll go down to here. Um, side and rear panels and then I added the drawers and some cleats to the rear to house my mitre bar for the sliding table and the small mitre bar made from Baltic birch and Moranti trim and finished in whittle wax. Let's go to the next picture. There's all the drawers in. How nice do they look Peter? That's such a nice job buddy. I noticed you got the little corner braces in there as well. Uh, yes there are mistakes. The most obvious being the drawer pulls. Uh, on the bottom drawer, wrong center line. So children, if you have a look to the bottom drawer on the left hand side, you'll see that that handle possibly should have been over the joint of the two drawers above, like the one on the right hand at the bottom is. Peter, why don't you just unfill the hole up and put it in the right spot? That looks great. Uh, and then back to the picture there. What a magic job. Um, hope you like and don't forget, keep making sawdust. All the best. Stay safe, Peter Lisiak. Well, Peter, I think that's bloody lovely, mate. And I need to have people send me 
their projects in. Now I also have another project that's been sent in of uh, wooden cars and vehicles. I haven't done that yet because I've just been under the pump with all sorts of things. One of the things being this dust extraction system and hopefully it will be totally finished tomorrow night and then I'm going to start doing the video on it. Now, in this video I'm also going to go along and I'm going to label every part that I put in it and its name. So you don't get confused, you can walk into a store or you can ring up and get quotes from different plumbing supplies companies and away you go. So I will tell you all the special details as well. All right, next thing, where, we, where are we, where are we, where are we? Ah, here it is. Um, thickness, one end of the piece. Now, these two pieces of New Guinea um, teak are different thicknesses. Now, before I get the domino out to them to do the join at the top here, and you're going to be amazed at how good it does it, what I'm going to do is I'm going to run it through the thickness planer. I'll change the cameras around again. Doesn't like it on the white paper. And back down there. So you guys stay busy congratulating Peter, and I will. Uh, oh, you like that video, do you, Mike? See, if you're one of my patrons, what I do is I also do previews for, for them. And there's a few guys there in the watching now have already seen the, the dust extraction system up to this stage. Now, I've got a little bit of a leak in this corner, but that's okay. I'll swing this around possibly to there for the moment. I'm going to show you as I flip this up the right way, push that down. I undo these little clamps down here, flip her up. At least there's no leaks over um, where my machine is. Oh, something interesting about this machine. While I've got all that head exposed, there are micro switches in behind here. I cannot turn this on. You watch, I'll try and turn it on. Nothing. The whole thing's dead. Until I flip this over. And now I can start it. I love this machine. I keep on telling people this is a great machine. If you want to, you can go to one of the links that I've got down in the description box for Carbotech and you can see where it is. Now, this timber, I'll come over here and grab this. I'm going to get my calipers and I'm going to find out the thickness. I want to show you how accurate this gauge is as well down here. I have two pieces of wood. And I'm going to measure off the skinnier one. I need 38.32 millimeters. I'm not going to get that. I'm going to go 38.3. Well, I'll probably go a little bit higher than that. So, winding this up. I don't know if you can see that spinning. Come around a bit further. Going to do it until it comes down to 38. Thirty-eight point three. Now here are one hundredths of a millimeter. See that? But I'm going to stop at thirty-eight point three, and I'm going to lock it there. Over here, over here is engaging the the drive feed, and I will come back over here. I'll bring this around to the other side now and tip it up a little. You can see all the stuff I've been using down there. And I'm going to have a look to see whether or not you guys can see it coming out all right. Up a little. Maybe to about there. That should work okay. All right. Put both of the pieces of timber through. Oh yeah, I prefer this to the jet. I do. This is beautiful. Um, headphones and turn the dust on. When I've got the system finished tomorrow night, all of the dust extraction will turn on automatically. But what's going to happen now is when I turn this on, the blast gate up there is going to open automatically. 
That's the first step. Yep, open. All right, here we go. Either I'm going to make it really beautiful or stuff it one or the other. Okay, that's it. No snipe. No snipe at all. It's just beautiful. All right. Well, that's that one and that one. I'll run this one through as well. It may not need it, but just to make sure if there's any bumps in it. Yep, there was. That noise you heard at the beginning was just as it was taking it up. That's fine. Now they are both exactly the same thickness. And do you see any dust? Oh, magic. None whatsoever. All right. What is the windmill sound? I don't know. Let me have a look, come back to this camera. Um, <laughs> Naughty corners full. Michael, you love your machine as well. That is just the best, best, best machine. Uh, a mortised height adjuster. I don't know. Living on the edge, indeed. See you later, Peter. Thanks for sending that, uh, those pictures in of that beautiful outfit table you did for us. I know. <laughs> All right. What have we done now? We're going to domino these two together. Now, I've got to make sure that I'm working from the same side because what I want to do is with this bench, I only have a certain thickness here for the top. I'm going to have dominoes on one side to hold the two pieces together here. And then I'm also going to have a domino come up from underneath to hold the center mullion that's going to go in. Okay? <coughs> or, or style, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> okay. I'm going to just clean this off. And I'm also going to turn the dust extract, sorry, the uh, room air filter on in here which I should have done earlier. Let it run for two hours. <clears throat> Whilst the dust extraction at the moment is really good, it's not perfect. So I just need to be aware of that. I'm going to clean things off the bench because I don't want things being held up. I'm going to use the bench a lot in the assembly in more ways than you, you would think. So I'll just quickly get it off here. And back up. There you go. Clean bench. Beautiful. I'm going to put a couple of dogs in there as well. I'll use some of John's. Uh, where are we? Which is the face that I want? That one there. And this one. Now this one I had a little bit of a chew out because I was using the wrong cutter. And that's why I suggested to do the, use the one that I said. So this is going to be the back. And that's how I want it to be set up. Oh, so pretty. So pretty. It's going to be magic. Um, all right. So a pencil. And I'm going to write on here back. And back. Uh, 
and they're the ones that I'm going to, I'm going to put it like that and this one like that straight away. Now I need to have the dominoes done both from this side because it's all now it's coming off referencing. So I shall move that one to there, that one to there. That's all looking pretty good. Bring that forward, push that into there. And this one, push that one into there. You can't see that, can you? I'll show you in a minute. And let's push that one there. That's going to do a lot of the holding for me. And then the clamps down the side here. Okay, not going anywhere. And this one, put one more dog in there. Like so. The clamp in from this side. A cal cam, so you can have a quick look at what how I've set it up. All right, so I have a couple of dogs there. And also I'll pull it back mm -hmm. this way. You can see I've got dogs down the end there. So when I push the domino mm -hmm. up against here, we're not going to have any movement. It's, it's held nicely. I'll go back to <clears throat> this one and have a drink. Um, maybe I'll bring this one up so you can see a little bit better as well. Bring that one around this side. That might work. I'll have a look. Yeah, that'll be nice. I'll go to the other one. So camera three and the in there as well. I need a bit of coffee. Can't hear me over the rain. <clears throat> All right, eye muffs. This is the embarrassing part where I walk around and sometimes they're actually on my head. <laughs> Found them. <laughs> All right, now I'm going to use the 10 millimeter domino cutter. Now these, these are not a drill, they're a router. So the cutter in there, when I push it forwards, see, it's, see that? That is a router cutter, not a drill bit. Does the coffee come pre-chilled? I have no idea. I've set to um, 55 millimeters deep back here because the dominoes I'm using are what's called sipper or mahogany. These are 12 mil thick. The 12, in case I said 10, they're 12. Uh, and this is a joy to use. This is one of the reasons I got this machine. I got the 700 instead of the 500 for furniture like this, um, that's like heavy construction. The 700 is the better way to go. I've got it set so it's a tight, tight fitting. I can flick it between, between both. There's a little indicator there. You can see it runs between the two different points. So it's just gonna be tight. I've got these pins here up. I haven't got any of the other pins up. It's, so I'm gonna be referencing off those pins. All right, here we go. And the top. And I'm sure I could hear some of you going, oh my God, you're gonna come out the other side there, Dave. Well, I'm not, because I always put a domino on top 
to see how close it's going to be. Now it is close, it's around about four millimeters or three sixteenths of an inch away, but that's fine. All right, going to do the other one. Check. <laughs> Alright, the way we go again. You can see why it's a good idea to set everything up nice and tight before you start. Right. Now we're going to put it together dry. So I'm just checking that I've got these the right length. I do. I've got, I've got some more there that I'm going to cut down and I'll go back to the main camera. What do you think? It's a magic machine. I love it. I'm going to bring this camera back around this side. It's a quarter two. We're going really, really well. And... Undo that. And undo that. Now, one of the other things that I can do here is spin that clamp around, bring it back in this way, and use a bench hook. Now, I did a video on how to make a thing like this. They're a very, very basic thing, but they work so well. Now, I could have the bench hook just sitting there and try and hold it, or I can do this. And that's, I don't have to worry now. And I'm going to use this. Now, Ian's going to gasp. This is my Turner 220 block plane. I love this little thing. I did a video on how restoring it. There we go. Basically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little chamfer on the end there. So it goes in nicer. Nicer up. So it's very easy with a... And over. And end for end. Done. So I don't know if you can see that, but it has now got a little chamfer on the end. So when I put it in with glue, it'll be lovely. But I'm not going to glue it yet. Because this bench is going to have so many things going in, interconnecting all over the place. When it comes to the glue up, you'll be amazed. All right, let's put some dominoes in. One, two, and it's just a matter of give them a bit of a tap. You like that? And we're going to put it in to the other one there. All right. I'll stand her up. See that? And just push it down. Okay, that'll pull together with the clamps. <laughs> Don't you love it? I love this kind of stuff. Now, I did say that I'm going to put a domino in here. So, let me see if I can do that right away. Uh, back and back. And looking down there, I've got to work from the front. I'm going to give her a bit of a tap. So, I'm going to lock it there and I'm going to hit it with a mallet down there. Will I use four dominoes? I'm going to use two dominoes there. The reason I've offset them down to one side is because I'm going to put another domino on this side there going up into that joint and I don't want it crashing with those other dominoes there. That's why I've set them either side. So the next thing to do as I say I need to clamp that. Getting more drips in here. 
get a couple of clamps so it's not going to go anywhere. And then when we've got this part done, I'm going to show you what else we're going to do. How good is that? <laughs> um, and I'll put another one here. Actually, back that one off as far as I can. Okay, wooden mallet. I could use a rubber mallet if I wanted to, but I'm going to tap this along. And we'll go to Carl Cam, shall we? We'll see how nice that joint's come up. There it is right there. Dale, you fell asleep. Well, there you go, buddy. No sweat. Now, I can move this over here. And this isn't going anywhere. This is all nice and flat. And because the two pieces have been thickness to the same thickness this way, I can now set the domino up here, but set this thing here to wobbly. So it's going to be slightly wider in its arc when it's doing the cut. I'll set it up right in the middle there, put that line right over the joint. And here we go. So now, just checking I haven't hit any dominoes up there. That's all good. <laughs> so now, come back to this one. I have the joint set up and I have that can go in there. I'll go to Carl Cam again for this part. Am I smiling too much? It's partly relief. <laughs> So there's a domino there now that I can move around a little bit. The reason being I was working off an arc here, so I didn't know if I was going to be perfect this way. Down here, the center piece of timber in the middle, I will also use the, um, that same domino and put it into there, but it will be tight, the tight swing, not, not the big swing, it'll be the narrow swing. So that'll be perfect. That's my... That'll be my mortise and tenon style joint. It's basically, it's a slip, it's a slip tenon. Now, what I want to do next is make sure that out at the ends, down there and down there, are square. And I'm going to do that with the track saw. Um, what's the point of that dumb between those two pieces? I just, just made comment. Have a look at the picture of how this bench is going to end up and there's a center style here and there's two styles here and the, the legs are on the ends now the part we're going to do next is actually the legs on the ends so i shall move this back out of the way and we'll see if i can pull this back far enough so you can see what i'm going to do with the track saw i'll bring it over this side i think and up. Sorry about having to set the camera up, but it's just one of those things. I haven't got a gazillion of them. And the track... I'll pop up here. And here. That's looking pretty fine. Um, I'll go to this other camera, camera three. Where are we? <clears throat> that might be the best position for it. Right. 
The bottom of both sides are where the legs are going to connect onto this back. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure the distance from this support, which is on my template, and this support, so that this is going to be parallel, because that was all set up perfectly. All right, where are we? That is 15 millimeters neat, and that is also 15 millimeters neat. That's perfect. Now, I'll put a couple of clamps on, go around the other side. And then after we've done that, we're going to have a look at the Craig uh, K4 and how to set it up, as I promised. We've got five minutes left, and it'll be fine. This into here, and then down so it locks. So the track isn't going to go wandering while I'm cutting. And this one, I'm hoping, will slide down past there. I need to pull this out a little. And up. Beautiful. Now see this, it's all, it's all being held in place with my bench. That's going to be magic. All right, get the saw. I'm not going to use the dust extractor. I'm going to use the bag. Uh, it's a gecko, that attachment here. This is for when I'm using melamine and stuff like that. I invested in one of these because it really does help, Dave. It holds the center of the track dead steady. If when I'm using a long track, it can't wander at all. You know, they'll probably say, oh, you know, they'll never, never bow. They're horribly strong. Well, I'm just a little bit on the insurance side. Why not? I need to move that one back a touch. Actually, I need to move it totally. It's totally in the wrong spot. Um, that was a bit of a blue. I'll move that one as well. Going to move them back. Plenty of holes to grab. There. And that one. Um, hmm. Another hole there. Beautiful. Uh, let's see if I've got the two working together. So you can see here, I've got, I'm hold, holding it in place. The track is clamped onto there now. It's not going to go anywhere. I'm going to set it to full depth of cut, which is 50 millimeters. And coming back here, here we go. And up to the other end to do this one. I'll spin that around a little so you can watch. Beautiful. Perfect. All right. Oh, I love it. So excited. Back to here. No, it's not instant. It just disables the power to it on that. It's not an emergency stop. It's just if you ha happen to open it whilst it's still turning, it turns the machine off. But by the time you get up to get it all the way open, it'll stop by the time before you can get to it to touch it. It works very well. It doesn't have a brake on it, if that's what you're asking. Pop this up. And then we're going to go to the K5. I might, I might just stand that up so you can have a look. Actually, it's not going to work standing it up, obviously. I'll put it to the side. <laughs> uh, let me see. Can I put it back here and will it stand up? Should do. There you go. See it in the background? Ta-da! <laughs> um, right, the K5. 
I think I have one here. K4. K4. It's probably behind me. Yes, there it is. Okay. As I said, someone asked me about this. This is the K4 jig. This is a very early model and it's totally imperial. That's how it was when they first came out. They do make them in metric now. So on the side here, you've got the guide block. This is what guides the drill bits to hold them steady at the angle to create a pocket hole to put a flat pan head screw in to do your junction. All right, now on the side here, you'll see there's the different sizes. So I set mine for three quarter inch, which is close enough to 19, it's 19.05 millimeters, for three quarter inch ply. So we'll put that in there and we'll slide it down. Oh, sorry, there are indents on the back here that this screw pushes into. So let's just slide it down to three quarters and then it'll find the indent as I tighten that up. Done. That's the first part finished. The jig is now set for three quarter inch thick material. The next thing to do is to set the drill bit. Now you notice underneath here, there's a little air cubby that the drill bit and will go into. Now this is a stepped drill bit, which means the front of it is one diameter and then around about 10 millimeters down, maybe 11 millimeters, it comes out to a larger diameter, which the middle is the clearance for the screw. The top is the width of the pan heads section of the screw. That's the part that's clamping. You cannot use countersink screws with this because the countersink will act as a wedge and split the timber. That's why they use a flat based pan head screw. On here is what's called a stop collar. Now on board as well is an Allen key just here. There it is. And it's for the stop collar. So I'm going to go to Carl Cam for the next part. All right. Here we have dimensions. And you'll see it says 5 8 7 8 1 inch. And on this side, half inch, 3 quarter, inch and a quarter. I'll hold it up closer to the camera. Nope, back this way. There we go. So the 3 quarter is where we want the step in the drill to go. So this part of this drill, this is the step section. Put it on there, you can see it a bit better. We loosen off the stop collar, drop it in, and then I'm going to slide that down till the step section gets to three quarters of an inch. I'm going to hold it with my thumb on three quarters, and then the stop collar here, we push down, there is a there's a stop here in the base that you just push it up to. And we tighten the tighten it up, and that's it. Put the Allen key back where it lives. And now, when we put the drill bit into the hardened steel guides, you'll see it finishes just shy of coming all the way through. Yeah, you can see it come back towards me. It's very hard. Like, see that? Okay, that's where it goes to. Now this part here, you adjust yourself. So I'll go back to the other camera. <clears throat> so you have all this part here, you adjust it so that when this toggle clamp pushes against the, the, the material, which is three quarters of an inch thick, it does it sufficiently, not overly, because if you do it overly, you're going to bend the body of the, the jig. You're going to bend it out that way and it's not going to work. How do you know what screws to use? There's this chart that you can get. Whoop, there are apps as well that you can get. And basically you dial in the thickness of the timber from one to the other. So it will have part A and part B that's the, how your joint's going to work. And it'll tell you how you say, right, well, the part A thickness on this particular one we're saying is inch and three eighths. And then the part A is inch and a half. And it tells me straight away I need um, 
setting to inch and three eighth on the jig and a two inch screw. Well, let's go down to three quarter because I think that's going to be a little bit more sensible. So there's two at three quarters. All right. And it tells me there three quarter inch jig setting, setting and an inch and a quarter screw. You do that and it's all going to work well. So that's just a quick one. I hope that answers the question for the viewer who was watching. It's a great jig. I've used the K4 for years. I've got the K5 as well that I've had for a year or so. And it's very handy if I haven't got the Foreman. But the Craig Foreman is the machine that I mostly use in the workshop. It's absolutely fantastic. I love it. All right, what was the next thing? I think that's it. I think that's the lot. Let me check my list. I'm going to ask you a question. Should I give one of my benches away? Now, the reason I'm asking is I have a bench that I've had for about two and a half years. It's right here. And it's made out of marine ply. And I'm thinking about doing a giveaway on the show for someone in Australia for it. I'm not going to ship this overseas. It would cost me an absolute bomb. Now, this is two and a half years old. I made it in 2018. I, the reason I, I'm going to give it away or why I'm thinking of giving it away is this sheet of marine ply was around about an inch and a half thicker up here than it was down here. That's just how plywood is sometimes. Birch ply is normally better. It's normally very consistent in thickness. So up here, because it was done on the CNC, it works from above. And as it was coming through doing these dados for the grip tape, this stuff down here, it got deeper and deeper. But it wasn't actually getting deeper. It's just because it was staying at the same thickness. The ply was thicker at that point. So the grip tape at, from here to here and from here to here is not going to be proud of the bench. That's why I haven't sold this one. I've held on to it. So you let me know and I will not respond until people put comments in the comment section. It's fine for you to put some comments there in the side at the moment, but I, I, won't, resp I won't do anything unless... <laughs> Uh, I won't do anything regarding it till next week, but I want to see comments below the video. So you just go to that comment section, and when I finish the, doing the stream, you'll be able to make comment. Now, you can make a comment as to how you think the Lutean bench is going as well. I have people saying that uh, it's as boring as I take too long to do things. One of the reasons I'm doing no, I'm not going to raffle it. I'm not going to raffle it. I'm going to give it away. Um, <clears throat> Okay, so I've lost where I'm at. Oh, that's right. The, the time that I take with the live show, I do on purpose because I know there's a lot of beginners watching and I just don't want people to get hold of the wrong end of the stick, especially when using a router table like I was this morning. I want to go through that process slowly. It's, yeah, I could sign it as well. <laughs> All right. Remember, comments down the bottom. If you, if you think it would be a good idea, I want comments down there. It's lovely to put comments in the, in the side here as we're happening, but it really does need to uh, go there. Otherwise, I was going to cut it up. That's all I was doing because I, ca I can't sell it. It's not what I'm selling. It, this was a second because of the sheet apply. It's deadly accurate, square and all that kind of stuff. Works brilliantly. All right. Now, uh, let me see. Imperial measurements confused. Cannot read metric at all. All right. I read both. That's just how I am. All right. I think that's the lot. I'm going to check down here again. Da, 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 da. And next week, I'm going to try and get Peter's cars down as well because they're really, really pretty. All right. Look after yourselves. Be nice to each other. I'll have the Zoom meeting in a minute or two after I shut the show down. Don't forget, Monday meetup um, <laughs> with Woodwork and Whiskers on Instagram. Uh, it's very intriguing this, this Monday. I don't know what, uh, who is going to be on it, but uh, I'll tune in for sure. Look after yourselves, be nice to each other, and I sh shall see you all next week. Thanks for watching. Bye.